today we are going to be talking about Bahrain. Kind of a funny name, you know. Uh, Bahrain. Because <laughs> a sheep buzz when it rains. I am joined here today with the payments professor. So, Payments Professor. Yes, Liam. Where is Bahrain? Do you know where Bahrain is? Bahrain, you will find, is actually, it's in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. It's right off the coast of Saudi Arabia. It's actually officially called the Kingdom of Bahrain, and it's an island country that's in the Persian Gulf. What's really neat if you do some studying of Bahrain is, remember when we were researching it, we found that some people say it might be where the Garden of Eden was. And it's also also referred to as like the Vegas of the Middle East because that's where a lot of people go to be able to party and have a lot of fun. So it's really cool in that case. It's also considered to be one of the richest countries in the world, but it hasn't been around that long. It's only been around as long as your dad since 1971. Wait, you were born in 1971? I was. What electronic payment options are there in Bra ba Baha Rain? Okay, the electronic payment options that are in Bahrain is there's really three main ones that we're going to be talking about and dealing with. And the three main services that they have for what we call EFTS, or Electronic Funds Transfer Services, are the Fawri Plus, the Fawri, and the Fawatir. Now, I know those names might sound a little bit strange to you, but that's because of their language and how they do things, okay? So if we look at the Fawri Plus, it is considered to be a near real time payment option or near real time payment service. And it allows customers and corporates to be able to transfer up to a thousand BD per day in less than 30 seconds, 24 7, 365. That's pretty fast. It ensures a straight through processing flow, and straight through processing is something we've talked about in other videos that is important for being able to have everything go through real quick because there's no manual intervention. In other words, a person doesn't have to get involved. That's what makes it really cool. Uh -oh. And there's also the FARI. So that was the FARI Plus. The FARI is a what we call deferred settlement. Deferred settlement means it takes place later. It's a deferred settlement funds transfer service that allows customers and corporates to be able to transfer any amount within a few hours. See, the FARI Plus, it had a limitation. The FARI, it's any amount, but it's within a few hours, but it's only on business days too. So it's got a little bit of a limitation. Now, if we get with the FAWA tier, what it really does is it aggregates bills from multiple billers and presents those bills to the customers or the corporates, because businesses get bills too. To the customers or the corporates because businesses get bills too. The Forest here, pro <laughs> sorry, the Forest here provides real-time bill payment services and inquiries, which allows customers to be able to pay bills within 30 seconds. That's pretty oh. quick for being able to pay your bills. It does have a direct debit service, which will automate the bill payment service, and the direct debit allows the billers. Well, as long as there's an authorization, because when you ever do debits, there's got to be somebody saying, yes, it's okay to debit my account, otherwise it becomes a problem. But it allows them to be able to debit the customer's account on a regular basis on a specific due date. We call those reoccurring payments of their bills without the need for the customer to worry about the payment taking place. So those are the three main ones. There's the FARI Plus, the FARI, and the FAWATIR. They sound similar. They are very similar. It's just a matter of one's very fast but has a limit. One's a little slower but doesn't have a limit. It's and then one is kind of a combination of the two depending on how fast you need it and if it's a recurring payment that's been successful before. I think it should be the one that's infinite should have the um, fast one but the slow one should have the limit. You're, you're, well, you know what's funny, Liam, is we do it backwards for a reason. The one that's slow, we don't put limits on because it gives us time in case there's a problem to be able to figure out, oh, wait, I didn't really mean to send that or I need to stop that payment. But the one that's fast because it's so fast and we can't stop it, that's why we have a limit in place because we call that a risk control. Oh. That makes sense? We're going to show you what... Um 
limit is and um unstoppable is. So okay. so unstoppable. It's it's there's like never a limit. It just keeps on going on. But stopple means it just hits a wall. Like it's a straight up wall. So who owns faster payments in Bahrain? Faster payments in Bahrain are owned by the central bank of Bahrain. And they work in co uh, cooperation with what's called Benefit and eight other major local banks. They are really seeing a lot of average daily volume. In fact, their average daily volume in 2017 was around 238 transactions. 238,000 transactions, let me, I know. Mind blowing. Wait, then who owns the bank? Oh, good question. Well, see, when it comes to ownership of banks, there's when there's a central bank, that means it's a government bank. So it's really not owned. It's a, it, if it's owned, I'd say it's owned by the people because it's government controlled. So it's the government oversees the bank. But then we also have what we call private banks. And private banks can be owned by, say, a family or an individual who starts up the bank. But they could also be you know, their own entity as well. And we look at credit unions, credit unions here in the U.S., they are actually owned by what they call their members. So membership in a credit union gives you some ownership as well. So it does depend on what type of bank or if it's a credit union as far as who owns it. Uh, so when you said like um, what owns the payments, you said the bank, but I was like, who owns the bank? Well, you know, it's funny when you say who owns the payments too, it depends on how the payment travels because payments have a charge or a fee that goes with them. Like, have you heard of Visa and MasterCard? No. Why would you know you, how we have credit cards? You, um, yes. Okay, credit cards, that's Visa and MasterCard, or it could be Discover, American Express. Credit cards, credit cards are gonna have a payment, and that means they go across a payment channel, and that payment channel is gonna have a fee that goes with it. So when we talk about these different countries, we're talking about some of their payment channels. Some of them are government owned, some of them are privately owned. Kids don't use their parents' credit card. You have been warned. As Liam would say, time out, time out. All right. When we went in to go make this video, I did have a script. In fact, a lot of people have asked, you know, does Liam come up with these questions on his own or does he go by a script? And the answer is, well, it's both. In fact, we went into creating this video on Bahrain and we had a script. But Liam went way off script. And what the professor did, the professor had to answer every question that he has. And I've done that. What's the result is we got more video than we've expected. So I'm going to break this video into two different parts. So this is the end of part one. Come back next week on our Faster Friday and we'll have part two of Faster Payments in Bahrain.